Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Tuhin and I am going to speak about the fascia iliaca compartment block. I will be throwing light on anatomy, sonoanatomy, cadaveric dissection, techniques and the pertinent literature on the fascia iliaca compartment block. I hereby declare that source of information used in this presentation are appropriately cited and the patient's consent have been obtained to use the photographs and videos. So what is the fascia iliaca compartment? It is a potential funnel shaped space, adipose space between the fascia iliaca anteriorly and the epimysium of psoas and iliacus muscles posteriorly. Please note that it is not synonymous with the epimysium. Fascia iliaca is formed by the peripheral fascicular aponeurotic sheets of the psoas and iliacus. Laterally, it is attached to the iliac crest and medially to the fascia overlying the psoas muscle. Fascia iliaca compartment communicates anteromedially with the extraperitoneal space and posteriorly with the paravertebral space via its superior opening at the level of L5. Fascia iliaca compartment and the psoas compartment are not enclosed within the same facial envelope. As you see in this picture, the fascia iliaca compartment contains femoral nerve and lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, but not the obturator nerve and genitofemoral nerve. A membrane-like structure separates the fascia iliaca compartment from the paravertebral gutter where the obturator nerve travels. Inferiorly, the fascia iliaca attaches to the iliac crest and communicates with the adipose space underneath the fascia lata via its inferior opening through which femoral nerve exits. The swas part of the fascia iliaca medially contributes to the formation of posterior wall of the femoral vascular sheath. And the lateral part of the fascia iliaca forms the conjoint tendinous sheath. At the level of anterior superior iliac spine, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve pierces the conjoint tendinous sheath and travels superficial to the fascia iliaca. In this reconstructed 3D image, it is clear that the fascia iliaca compartment is a funnel shaped space which consists of the swas part, the lateral conjoint tendinous part, and the third part from inferior prolongation of the inguinal ligament. And the femoral and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve pierces the fascia iliaca below the inguinal ligament, whereas the obturator nerve lies outside the fascia iliaca compartment. An optimal knee replacement for ultrasound guided fascia iliaca compartment block is through the conjoint tendinous sheet, which lies inferior to anterior superior iliac spine and medial to the upper part of the sartorius muscle. The estimated volume of fascia iliaca compartment in adult cadaver was 23 cc of which one third lies below the anterior superior iliac spine. So we have two approaches of the fascia iliaca compartment block, the supra and the infra inguinal approaches uh, depending on the site of performance. Let's have a look at the evolution of the fascia iliaca compartment block for a better understanding. The journey began with three in one block described by Winnie et al as a uh, anterior approach to lumbar plexus block, but neither the use of PNS nor increasing the volume of local anesthetic improved the global success rate of three in one block. Dallin Settle in 1989 described the landmark guided technique of the infrainguinal fascia laca block and reported higher success rate than the three in one block. Almost two decades later, Dolan et al. 
in 2006 reported the ultrasound guided infraguinal facial iliac block later in 2007 stevens et al reported landmark guided supraguinal facial iliac block and subsequently hebbard et al uh, in 2011 uh, reported the ultrasound guided supraguinal facial iliac block so let's focus on the infraguinal fascia iliaca compartment block. In landmark guided technique, the line joining anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle is divided into three parts. A blunt tip needle is inserted one centimeter distal to this line at the junction of medial two third and the lateral one third. We will get two pops here the first one while piercing the fascia lata and the second one while going through the fascia iliaca after careful aspiration 30 to 40 cc of local anesthetic is deposited at following disconnection of syringe the backflow of local anesthetic is observed which may act as a surrogate marker for identification of the correct facial plane in ultrasound guided infrainguinal approach, the probe is placed at the level of inguinal crease and the femoral nerve and vessels, the iliosuous muscle, fascia lata, and fascia iliaca are identified. The needle is inserted lateral to medial and placed beneath the fascia iliaca. Following deposition of the local anesthetic, the separation of iliosuous muscle from the fascia iliaca and the medial spread of local anesthetic can be observed in real time ultrasound. The use of ultrasound has significantly increased the success rate over the landmark guided approach, as evidenced by increased incidence of motor block as well as sensory block. In my opinion, the infrainguinal fascia iliaca compartment block is an indirect approach to femoral nerve block. Please note that at this level, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve lies be below the fascia lata, but above the fascia iliaca. So we need to block it separately. Among the three targeted nerves, obturator nerve is the most challenging one to block. To overcome the shortcoming, my approach is to block the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve first and then advance the needle towards the fascia iliaca compartment and mm, deposit the local anesthetic there. This is what I call as two-in-one block because uh, with a single point of needle entry, we are actually performing the two blocks. One is ellipsian and another is the infrainguinal fascia iliaca block. Moving on to the supraingoinal fascia iliaca block, Stevens et al. described a landmark guided technique with a point of needle entry one centimeter above the inguinal ligament at the junction of medial two third and lateral one third of the line joining anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. They observed a significant morphine sparing effect after total hip arthroplasty with this technique. In ultrasound guided fascia iliaca compartment block, the probe is placed sagittally next to the anterior superior iliac spine and moved medially along the inguinal ligament. The sartorius, internal oblique, iliacus muscles, and deep circumflex iliac vessels are identified. After confirming the bow tie sign formed by the muscles and the fascia, the local anesthetic is deposited beneath the facial iliaca and the uh, cephalad spread of local anesthetics, as well as the upward lifting of the deep circumflex iliac vessels. Uh, are observed in real time ultrasound. To perform this block, the patient is positioned supine with extension of hip and knee joints. The retraction of the abdominal wall 
or reverse Trendelenburg position may be needed in obese patients. Let's have a look at the scanning technique. A high frequency linear probe is placed sagittally next to the anterior superior iliac spine and moved inferomedially along the inguinal ligament towards the anterior inferior iliac spine to visualize the iliacus muscle, internal oblique muscle medially, and the sartorius muscle laterally. The deep circumflex iliac vessels are identified above the fascia iliaca and one to two centimeter cephalad to the inguinal ligament. Sometimes medial tilting of the probe is required to, his, to get an optimal image. A 100 millimeter needle is inserted two to four centimeter cordat to the inguinal ligament, aiming to place it beneath the fascia iliaca cephala to the inguinal ligament. Hydro dissection is used to separate the fascia iliaca from the epimysium of the iliacus muscle. The cephala spread of local anesthetic is typically described as the unzipping pattern. Among the described needling techniques, most commonly we use cordat to cephalad in-plane needling, a cephalad to cordat in-plane needling, as well as an out-of-plane bullocks approach was also described. But obesity and patient's respiration may hinder of image quality as well as the performance of the block in the last two techniques. Vermilion et al. reported an interesting finding. Uh, the passive leg mobilization could promote the cephalad spread of local anesthetic in the fascia iliaca compartment. They observed 1.5 centimeter more cephalad spread of drug with passive leg mobilization. It is too early to comment on this, but um, it is worth to investigate this area further. The optimal volume to block the three nerves are yet to be determined, but in most of the clinical setting, we use 40 cc of local anesthetic. In this cadaveric study, Vermilion et al reported that 20 cc of dye was adequate to stain the femoral as well as the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve consistently. But at least 40 cc of dye was required to, to stain the obturator nerve. With increasing volume, they observed more cranial and medial spread towards the obturator nerve. As seen in this slide, increasing the volume also stained ilioinguinal, uh, subcostal nerve, and the genitofemoral nerve. The dye also spread posteromedial to the psoas muscle to stain the obturator nerve. Recently, a group of researchers estimated the mean effective volume of dye in 90% cases required to stain all three nerves for ultrasound-guided supraingoinal fascia iliaca block in adult cadavers. They observed MEV90 of 62.5 ml, which exceeds the volume of 40 cc, which is commonly used in clinical setting. Hence, further cadaveric clinical and radiological studies are required before recommending any particular volume for fascia iliaca compartment block. The researchers observed two different kind of dye spread. In first picture, the dye spread towards the postromedial aspect of the swas major muscle and stained the obturator nerve, whereas uh, in the other picture, with 24% success rate, the dye spread to the posteromedial surface of the swas major muscle as well as in the extraperitoneal compartment to near the external iliac vessels to stain the obturator nerve. So what could be the mechanism of obturator nerve block in fascia iliac compartment block? 
it could be due to the rostral spread of the local anesthetic or translocation of local anesthetic from the anterior facial area compartment to the posterior swas compartment or the migration of local anesthetic from facial iliac compartment to the retroperitoneum it is clear now that facial iliac compartment block consistently involve the femoral and the alexian um, nerves it may also involve the obturator genito femoral ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal and the subcostal nerve depending on the spread pattern and the volume of local anesthetic used we at ganga hospital use the facial iliac compartment block for hip analgesia in perioperative period as on arrival block and for the ease of positioning before neuraxial block it makes the patient uh, pain free and comfortable it can also be used for surgeries involving femur patella quadriceps tendon and knee in supraguinal facial iliac compartment block we are targeting the branches from femoral and the obturator obturator nerve which supply the anterior nociceptive ridge part of the capsule and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve which involved in the cutaneous innervation of the surgical incision facial iliac compartment block decreases the static as well as the dynamic pain scores the success of block can be assessed by uh, assessment of of the individual nerve uh, for femoral nerve block sensory block is assessed by checking the cold sensation on the medial aspect of the leg and the motor block can be assessed by checking the quadriceps strength by asking the patient to kick or punt against the resistance successful ellipsin block can be assessed by checking the cold sensation or pinching the lateral uh, aspect of the upper thigh the sensory assessment of the obturator nerve is unreliable because in more than 50% cases instead of obturator nerve the medial cutaneous nerve from anterior division of the femoral nerve supplies the medial thigh the combined contribution of lumbar and sacral plexi to the hip adduction may also hinder with the motor assessment of the obturator nerve so who is the winner definitely supraguinal facial iliac block as per the evidence gathered so far the supraguinal injection for facial iliac compartment block results in more consistent spread towards the lumbar plexus as evidenced by the complete block of anterior medial and the lateral thigh post block electromyographic comparison also revealed the successful block of obturator nerve in supraguinal approach and it also decreases the opioid consumption in total knee arthroplasty as well as in total hip arthroplasty supraguinal facial iliac block has shown similar efficacy when compared with epidural local or periarticular infiltration lumbar plexus block femoral nerve block and the recently described pain block no significant differences were observed in terms of vas core uh, opioid consumption or complications patients who received facial iliac compartment block had lower incidence of hypotension hypotension as compared to the epidural uh, the shorter block performance time as compared to the lumbar plexus block because of supine position and uh, better analgesia to the lateral thigh because of involvement of lateral femoral cutaneous nerve but increased quadriceps weakness was reported when compared to local or periarticular infiltration and the pain block the pain block also blocks the articular branches from the accessory obturator nerve which is present in 30% cases there is no study on supraguinal facial iliac block blocking these articular branches it is too early to recommend one block over another we need more clinical radiological trials continuous 
facial aga compartment block has not shown any benefits over the single shot technique we at our hospital repeat the block if needed in my opinion the intermittent bolus would be more helpful than continuous infusion to for a better cephalad spread other indication for facial aga compartment block are femoral bypass surgery uh, patient's refusal patient allergic to local anesthetic and any infection at the block site it may be avoided in patients with coagulopathy and peripheral neuropathy the reported complications are block failure hematoma local anesthetic systemic toxicity quadriceps weakness perforation of the peritoneal cavity contents blood up perforation and injury to the vessels in this area to conclude facial leca compartment block is effective for perioperative analgesia in patients with hip fractures it is opioid sparing but does not provide complete analgesia or anesthesia for hip surgery the supraingual facial leca compartment block is definitely a good choice over the infraingual approach and the use of ultrasound has improved the success rate and safety profile the recent prospect guidelines for total hip arthroplasty has also recommended the use of fascia single shot fascia iliaca block for pain management in perioperative period thank you for your patient hearing i am thankful to the organizing committee for this wonderful opportunity